Where's the engine? Did you get the engine back yet? When are you gonna finish the motor? Guess what we're doing in this video today, guys? Building brackets. I mean, building an engine. Come check it out. Anyways, I bought this motor before I actually bought the truck that I put it in. But before I bought it, I got to see it run. It came out of a 94 Dodge Ram. It had about 100,000 miles on it, and it seemed like it was fine, but just watching an engine run for a minute or two doesn't mean that everything was okay. So I wanted to tear it apart to make sure there was nothing wrong with it internally. And before I ordered any parts, I wanted to see what needed to be replaced. So I took the entire engine apart. Once I tore it apart, I saw that everything looked pretty normal, so I ordered a rebuild kit. Now the first thing I want to do is run a quick hone through these cylinders so that the rings have something to seat on. And to do that, I'm using a flat stone hone because that's going to help keep the wall straight. Now that the cylinders have a nice cross hatch on them and they're all cleaned up, the next thing I did was measure all the piston ring end gaps. After I verified that those are still within spec, it's time to assemble the pistons. Okay, the first thing I did was label the connecting rods with a sharpie so I knew which way they went back into the piston. Then I removed them from the old pistons by taking out the snap ring and pushing out the wrist pin. Okay, to assemble the new piston, first I'm going to start by installing the snap ring on one side of the piston. Once one side's installed, I'm going to put some assembly lube on the inside of the wrist pin bearing and also on the side of the wrist pin. Next, you're going to want to make sure the front of the piston, as labeled by the top, is going to line up with the front of the connecting rod, which I wrote on earlier. And then it's just a matter of sliding the wrist pin into the piston and then inserting the connecting rod. Once the wrist pin is fully installed, you're going to insert the snap ring and that's going to keep the wrist pin in place. Now it's time to start installing the piston rings and the first thing you want to do is put some assembly lube in the ring groove. And then we're going to start with the oil control ring, which is two pieces, and we're going to install that first. Now it's time for the second ring, which gets installed in a certain direction. It's indicated on the top of the ring by a little dot, and also so that the bevel on the side of the ring faces upwards, and that's going to install just like the last ring. Now it's time for the top ring, which also has a dot on it, which indicates which way faces up. All 
All right, after repeating that five more times, you've got a set of pistons that are ready to get installed in the engine. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is rotate all the piston rings so that none of the end gaps are facing the same direction as each other. Once that's done, I'm gonna coat the entire piston in some oil so that it'll help slide into the cylinder a lot easier. Now it's just a matter of sliding the piston into the cylinder and compressing the rings with a ring compressor. After a couple taps with the handle of a hammer, the piston slides right in. The next thing I want to do is rotate the engine so I can access the underside of the cylinder. From here you can install the connecting rod bearings and I like to do this after the piston's installed because if I install the bearing before, the bearing usually falls out when I tap on it with the hammer. Now it's time for the connecting rod cap, which gets a new bearing half as well, and then some assembly lube. Now it's time to spin the engine around and do it all over again. Once they're all installed, it's time to torque the connecting rod bolts down and these get torqued in two different steps, first to 44 foot-pounds and then they get turned another 60 degrees because they're torque angle bolts. Alright, the next thing I installed was a new rear main seal which got a new gasket as well. Next up I installed the oil pickup tube. Next up was some RTV where the front cover and rear cover bolt to the block and then it was time for the oil pan gasket. Followed up by the oil pan which is held in place by about a thousand bolts.
Okay, now that the bottom end's pretty far along, I'm gonna tape up some key areas on the block and put a coat of paint on it. Okay, here's the bottom end with a fresh coat of paint and a billet tappet cover. I think it looks really good. Now it's time to move on to the next part. The next thing I wanna do is clean up the head and to do that, I gotta remove the valves. So in order to remove the valves, I'm using this valve spring compressor, which compresses the spring so you can remove the keepers from the valve. The valve seals will get replaced as well, so you gotta remove all of the old ones. After chemically cleaning the head and all the valves, I think it looks really good. And now the next thing I wanna do is start to reassemble this thing. Okay, first I want to install new valve seals, but in order to do that, I gotta grab my valve seal installer tool, which is just a fancy name for a socket. And I'm gonna tap these on with a rubber hammer. Here's the valves all cleaned up and I'm just going to install these with some assembly lube. Next, the valve springs go back on the same way they came off with the valve spring compressor and then they're held in place with the keepers. Here's what the head looks like with all the valves and valve springs installed. Now the next thing I want to do is Bob Ross this thing with some of Rust-Oleum's finest. Now it's time to install the head, but first I gotta put on a new head gasket.
This head weighs about as much as I do, so I'm using the cherry picker to lift it into place, and I'm also going to thread a couple of head studs into the block to use as a guide as I lower it down onto the block. These head studs are from ARP and use a fastener assembly lube on the threads and should hold the head down much better than a standard head bolt would. Next up, I'm installing the push rods, and this would have been much easier had I not installed the tappet cover first, but I managed to get them installed anyway. Now I'm installing the rockers which will also be held in place by the head studs. Here's the rockers installed. Next up I gotta put the nuts on the head studs. Now it's time to torque the head studs down. This gets done in three different steps, working from the center out. Now that the head studs are all torqued down, it's time to set the valve lash. Alright, this right here is called the killer dowel pin and it has the potential of falling out, so I want to remove this bolt and make a little cover that's going to bolt into place and will hold that dowel pin from falling out. Alright, that's what that looks like right there. A little bit of Loctite should stop this thing from ever falling out and destroying this motor. Okay, next up I got the injection pump and this gets mounted on the driver's side of the motor. Alright, before I removed the injection pump, I pinned it with the motor at top dead center. So now that the motor is at top dead center again, the timing gear can be installed on the injection pump. Next, I installed the intake plenum cover 
as well as a fuel line. Moving on to the front of the motor, it's going to get a new water pump and O-ring. Right here, the top of the motor is getting the rocker covers installed. Next I installed the timing cover complete with a new front main seal. Then I installed the idler pulley. The crankshaft gets a new harmonic balancer. And the side of the block gets a new lift pump. Okay, back to the top of the engine. It gets a new thermostat on the upper water neck. followed by a brand new alternator. Moving on to the exhaust side of things, the manifold gets installed. And finally, the crown jewel, a giant turbo. Okay, on to the back of the motor. This is the adapter plate that the transmission and the starter are going to bolt to. Now for the fuel department. These are the injectors.
and last but not least, the injector lines which tie it all together. Alright, that's going to be it for this video. In the next video we should be tackling some other parts and hopefully putting this thing into the actual truck, so be sure to watch for that. It might not be as long of a wait as it was for this video to come out, but stay tuned for more and I'll see you next time.